the Naughty Oak Baptist Church. Uh, welcome for those to joining us by YouTube uh, live. We're going to stand here and uh, sing number 18, Take the Name of Jesus with you. Join us with us at home if you, if you can, and if we have the hymns up here in just a moment, I'm sure. Take the name of Jesus with you. <clears throat> the first. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you. Take it then where'er you go. Precious name, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, Oh, how sweet hope of earth and joy of heaven. Take the name of Jesus ever as a shield from every snare. If temptations round you gather, breathe that holy name in prayer. Precious name, oh, how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of him, precious name, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of him, oh the precious name of Jesus, how it thrills our souls with joy. When his loving arms receive us, and his songs our tongues employ, precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of him, precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of him, at the name of Jesus bowing, Falling prostrate at his feet. King of kings in heaven will crown him when our journey is complete. Precious name, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of him. Precious name, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy. precious name that is. Amen. We're going to sing number 60, face to face I shall behold him. <clears throat> first face to face with Christ my Savior face to face what will it be when with rapture I behold him Jesus Christ who died for me face to face I shall behold him far beyond the starry sky Face to face in all his glory, I shall see him by and by. Only faintly now I see him with a dark thing veiled between. But a blessed day is coming when his glory shall be seen. Face to face I shall behold him far beyond the starry sky. Face to face in all his glory I shall see him by and by. What 
rejoicing in his presence when our banished grief and pain when the crooked ways are straightened and the dark things shall be plain face to face i shall behold him far beyond the starry sky face to face in all his glory I shall see him by and by. Face to face, O oh blissful moment, face to face to see and know, face to face with my Redeemer, Jesus Christ, who loves me so. Face to face I shall behold him Far beyond the starry sky Face to face in all his glory I shall see him by and by Amen. Please be seated for prayer. We installed a large screen TV in the back there. It doesn't look so large from here, does it? So now we get to see there what you're seeing here. That'd be helpful. Also, um, fence is nearly done, right, Justin? The fence along the fence line, the old fence line. Yep, stained, a few other things we'll be doing. We build a retaining wall in front of it and uh, put in flowers back. We might wait till spring. Brian, how about baptistry being moved behind the choir box? Is that doable? Okay. We need to fix this back here. Um, that curtain hang up just doesn't look so good on YouTube. We really want to do a top notch program. So we're going to do, we're going to move some things around here. Baptistry up there, and that's a little better because most folks can't see the baptisms the way we have it here. Um, so this will go up there, and then we'll clear this out and put a door here and outlay all this with oak. It'll be a nice contrast for the uh, broadcast. So we'll have the banners on either side, the Lamb of God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. I think it'll look real nice. What else? We didn't get a laser printer today, but we will get one tomorrow. Color laser. We can start upgrading our tracks. Keep sending the money in so we can keep upgrading the things here. Can you do that? Keep sending that money. Is that is it not working? Well, um, Brother John, Brother Bob, boy, I'll tell you, they love you guys at Portsmouth. Just name you guys the co-pastors and turn it all over to you. <laughs> and the Mrs. Connick. For Sunday. Oh, no. There we go. Did you remember her? She uh, said she had a good con conversation with you, she and her husband. They're sweet folks. Judy, you weren't there, were you? But uh, Okay, good. We love Jonathan. Pastor Lewis, my goodness. We're getting treated to good preachers here, that's for sure. And... Uh, That's good. A lot of things happening. Uh, we did. We are having some struggles with uh, two of the marriages in the church. I think we scheduled out a week late, Bob. Yeah. Be praying for the young newlyweds. 
I'm talking about folks who have been married three or four years or less. It's not something anyone should enter into lightly. It's hard to tell people that, though, when their heart's set on getting married. But it's for life, brethren, not for uh, till you get tired of it. It's for life. You want God divorcing you? Anybody here want God divorcing them? So think about that when you think about divorcing your spouse. Well, let's pray. Brian will lead us in a couple other songs. Uh, the governor came out with restrictions today and more to come. And that explains a little bit of your downcast spirit. I'm going to talk about that tonight. I know we haven't talked about COVID since March. <laughs> it's the defining moment of our era. It cannot be ignored. Let's pray. Father, we come to you as your people, and we make our prayer unto you, as they said in the book of Nehemiah. We make requests, Lord. We ask you, Father, to demonstrate to us, if you would, your purposes. We know that they're often kept in your mind and, and stay there. But Lord, we'd like you to reveal them if you could or would. And yet, Lord, we know you want us to trust you no matter what your purposes may be. And certainly you have shown yourself to be trustworthy. I pray, Father, that as we deal with another round of these things, and now we're encroaching upon our holidays, and spoiling the, the freedoms we've enjoyed, past several months, and the loosening of these things, we, we pray for you to be merciful to us. You know our prayer, Father, that you obliterate this thing, that it couldn't have come into existence apart from your knowledge, maybe even by your creative hand, who knows, Lord, only you. We pray for it to be destroyed. Lord, if there are people who have created this thing for our hurt and to the loss of freedom purposely, we, we pray, as Paul did, that you would reward them according to their works. For they have sought to do damage to your people. But I thank you, Father, that as we count our blessings and see what you have done, we know that you, again, meant it for good and did all things for good. And we say it is good. Help us to not let these be mere words, Father, but truths that we live by. We don't want to be comforted for a moment, Father, with a pithy saying, but we want our comfort to be genuine and lasting because we believe these things to be true. Minister to the churches that may face these things more stridently in the next several months. What is uh, opportunities that we've planned on get 
taken away from us or dried up or come to less than we thought, we, we do commit the whole thing to you and ask you to give us creative wisdom and the ability to minister even more effectively, perhaps in different settings and through different technologies and to different people. Help your people, Lord, to not be saddened. <clears throat> you told us that you would bless obedience, and we take it that those blessings are designed to make us happy in what you have done not in what we have done. So bless us, Lord, bless. Work out circumstances to our advantage. We might have cause for rejoicing. As we approach the Lord's Day, Father, uh, bring out all of our people. Teach our assembly, Lord, that we will make accommodation somehow, some way, for everyone to feel safe and to practice uh, good citizenship. Help no one stay away, Lord, for, for the reason of meeting the requirements of a restriction. We thank you what you've given to us, two buildings to worship in, Technologies that allow us to still unite together. A way to get this thing done. So help us not stay home, except it be out of caution for our health. But not, not to meet a restriction. Lord. Pray, Father, that you bless the work tonight. Help us to pay careful attention. That we would learn and, and learn lessons that will serve us well, not only in the present, but in the future. Lessons that we can literally learn and live by and be blessed by and be thankful for. Help us to not be robotic and apathetic, but earnest and, and trusting. Please, Lord. May the truths of Scripture, in concert with the events of the day, transform us into your likeness. We want others to see something, Lord, in this assembly, to see someone as well as something. May Christ be seen. May love and joy be seen in faith and hope and temperance. May kindness and compassion be seen Pray, Lord, for you to bless each home with a good Thanksgiving meal. Lord, help us to be thoughtful of any brethren in our assembly who have no family and no place to go but to sit at home or go to Denny's or something. And we would like, Father, everyone here to have a table to sit at and give thanks over. Bless those who will be joining the bakers for Thanksgiving. Lord, when uh, our leaders, so-called leaders, uh, break the rules that they set for us, burn them with conviction, with heaps of burning coals, Lord, upon their heads. Let them not escape 
the torment of their conscience. What they've done is wicked, Father. I don't speak about our own governor, Lord, I don't know. We know around the country these leaders are breaking these rules faster than they give them to us to obey. And it sickens us. After our nation tonight, bless the preaching of your word. Fill this preacher with your Holy Spirit. And Lord, take of the words that are offered at that pulpit. Utilize them tonight for Jesus' sake. We thank you. We do this in his name. Amen. Amen. Well, Brian, lead us in a few more songs. A few meaning two. Well, why don't we have Mrs. Lewis pick a song and Mrs. Dete pick a song? Or Mitha and Judy pick a song out of the hymnal. Oh, you don't have it. <laughs> My Jesus, I think we have that. And we'll meet, did you have a song, a favorite? Can, you, can Jonathan hum it for us? Jonathan, hum it in Kenyan. Blessed assurance, okay, very good. No, sing them all. These are honored lady guests. my pardon on Calvary's dream. I love thee for wearing the thorns on thy brow. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. I assurance. Jesus is mine.
and 43. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, Perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, ring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. We use the screen because we decided not to use the hymnal until... It was safe to use the hymnal. But we found that using the screen has allowed us to add a lot of songs that we don't usually sing. Good songs that are found in other hymnals, but not in our hymnal. Not any, not any hymnal has all the songs you want in it. We've been able to add a bunch, and that's been good. A little bit inconvenient, but gives us some laughs. How are you doing tonight? Your boss had an early morning meeting this morning. What's wrong with that guy? Huh? Oh, he does. <laughs> Amen. If ever I love thee, my Jesus. How's that go? How do we sing that? If ever I love thee, my Jesus does not right. Well, now we need to love more than anything. We've got the election things to pray about, and virus, holiday things, ministries, revival, church plants. Do we have a special tonight, Brian? You know who might be singing? Right? I'm just wondering who it might be. It might be Anthony or I don't know who it might be. I know it's not Rob Martinez. <laughs> it's 
No, Justin either, right? <laughs> We've done about everything else in the past two weeks, right? Oh, my. Good job. Good job. Crystal, you wanted this paperwork? You going to come up here? Or you want to just take care of it there? How do you want to do this? Some folks had questions of what they were supposed to bring. I can just tell you what. Food. <laughs> Who needs to know? All right. Josh is first in the back there. Addie Stevenson. Let's do this quick if we could. We also in the lower building for Andrew. We have another place for maskless people, Bob. Defiant maskless people. There's a, there's a difference. I respect the defiant. We have a special place for those folks. <laughs> the advantage to the lower building. Andrew, are you watching? We love you, Andrew. We're all set, Chris? We do need is uh, carrots if you can bring them up still, or potatoes. Of course, we need about uh, 15 more pieces of meat, whether a turkey or a ham. Let's take our Bibles, open up to Second Chronicles to start. Bob Furlan was in this passage a few weeks ago. He said a few things that got this preacher looking around a little bit in the scriptures. Bob knows what that, that's like. You hear other preachers, and next thing you know, you got a sermon winding in your head, right, Bob? The question that Solomon had, David, uh, Bob did a good job that night. The question was, if we turn from you, God, and we turn back, if we turn from you and we turn back, what will you do? And God said, well, what he said is, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked way, turn from their wicked way, turn from and turn to who? Huh? All right, turn from, turn to, turn from their wicked way, turn to the Lord, right? He said, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, will heal their land. But if you look at verse 19, God answers a question that Solomon did not ask. But God thought it should be covered. The question was, if we turn away, and then turn back, what will you do? God said, if you turn away and turn back, this is what I'll do. But the question that was not asked was, what if we don't turn back? What if we stay turned away? Interesting question. Solomon was assuming that if God's people turned away, knowing that they could find forgiveness and restoration, they'll surely turn back. People turn away, but if God turns up the heat enough, they'll turn back. 
It was an assumption that he should not have made. Because God says in verse 19, but if you turn away, in other words, you turn away and turn back, this is what I'll do. If you turn away and continue to turn away, this is what I'll do. Then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land which I have given them. And this house which I have sanctified for my name will I cast out of my sight, and I will make it a proverb and a byword among all nations. And this house which is high shall be an astonishment to everyone that passeth by it, so that he shall say, Why hath the Lord done this unto this land and unto his house, or this house? And it shall be answered, because they forsook the Lord, God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and lay hold on other gods, and worship them, and serve them. Therefore hath he brought all this evil upon them. So, is God willing to give a second chance? What if we don't take it? What if we don't take the second chance? I mean, God made us an offer of mercy. We came to know him. Through a series of circumstances, we turned away. We realized we forsook the mercies of God, forfeited blessings, and we turned back to him. That's the way it's supposed to work. What if we don't turn back to him? God said, then, it's going to be really bad for you. Is that what he says? It'll astonish people what I'll do. They'll say, why did God do this to his people? To this house, which was his house. Why did God do this? So, we take it that, and I take it that Corona has exposed sin in the church. We've talked about this hundreds of times. We're literally. And many people have not repented of that sin. And I'll start with the sins by saying this, and we've all been guilty. It's not a matter of have you been guilty, it's a matter of what have you done when you discovered your guilt. How about murmuring and disputing? Sins? Are they? Yes. Just, just as sinful as adultery. Murmurings and disputings. Boy, preachers heard enough complaining and arguing to drive them batty. I've talked to many preachers about this, and I don't know any who've escaped it completely. It seems that in every church, there's been at least a problem, and we had ours here. Sayonara to those folks. They did not hold the unity of the church at any priority. It's our way or we're going to disrupt everybody. They disrupted right out the door. Praise the Lord. I have a low tolerance for folks who have a low love for the church. Christ died for the church. The church is his body, his bride. Nobody has a right to tinker with it. So I hope in that first wave of restrictions, which was the first time we'd ever had to deal with this, that through the course of time we learned our lessons. And we learned some things. We quoted them here enough. They meant it for evil. God meant it for good. How many times did you hear that? All things work together for good. And it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy ways. It's been good, good, good. And if it hasn't been good, you haven't been listening and paying attention. Whenever God exposes sin, that's a good thing. It's not good that there was sin. It's good that it was exposed. 
And what God said that judgment must begin in the house of God is true. Why should judgment begin upon an unsaved world that knows not Christ? When those who know Christ have no reason to be sinning. We have every reason to be obedient. So God says judgment begins in God's family. The house of God. So as God starts to clean up things, he starts with us. Is that right? And we have to let him show us. You know what we teach. Sins are ever before us, David said. If you were given enough quiet time and enough prompts, you could think about almost all of your sins today. You could recount them. You really could. But if someone said, what are your wicked ways that lead you into those sins? You'd scratch your head and say, you know, I really don't know. And that's why David asked God to help him find his wicked ways. Search me, O God, know my heart. Try me and see if there be some wicked way in me. David didn't have to ask God to show him his sins. David said, my sins are ever before me. But my wicked ways, I have a hard time finding them. They're there. But the scripture says wisdom is justified of her children, which means that when you live by a wicked way, you justify it. The devil helps you. It makes sense to you. That's why you live that way. So God wants us to find those wicked ways and turn from them. Turn from them. Because if we don't, they just lead us into the same sins over and over and over again. So hopefully in all of this, we learned about some of our wicked ways as a people, as a church. I know we did here. Shame on us for not utilizing technologies better than we did before. We utilize them so much more effectively now. There's more of a seriousness in our church than there ever has been. Yet we still enjoy ourselves and have times we laugh and loosen up in a good way. There's been a whole lot of evangelism. People have been forced to pray. How can we still minister to Bruce Raffensperger? Well, we go stand outside his window and sing to him. <laughs> Remember doing that. How do we minister to those children? We can't get into the school. Let's invite them to the church. Wow. And the unity, the oneness, willingness to work together. Of course, there's always uh, different things that make us smile. You walk in and Sherry's got to spritz you. Casey's got to say, are you going to wear your mask, Pastor? It hasn't been without its light moments. But we hopefully we've all learned some things in our, in our own life about our own self. We've learned, I hope, that it's wrong to caricature dignitaries. That's what the Scripture teaches. You wouldn't want anyone doing that to you. You have enemies too. Sometimes it's funny what people do, but it's still wrong. Our governor makes an easy target to caricature. I wouldn't want to be her children and see those things on Facebook. Uh, if they find out it's a church doing it, uh, there goes our opportunity to ever help her and come to know the Lord. 
We've learned to pray for our leaders, which we're supposed to. But we, we very rarely did in the past. So there's been good things come out of all this. But I hope we've learned about our sins. Because if we didn't, according to Second Chronicles, it's going to be worse. God's not going to say, well, they failed. I'll give them a break and not give them the test anymore. That's not what he does, brethren. Take a look at Jonah chapter 3, chapter 1. Flip over there. A little different kind of approach to our preaching tonight. My heart's a little heavy, not because of the restrictions. I've learned enough through all of it that somehow, some way, we're going to get through it fine. And we're going to have better ministry. I'm excited to see what God's going to do. I mean, I'm sitting here just enjoying the fact that every week we're able to put money in the bank. What a change that is after 30-some years. And that's after buying and paying for and tending to preachers, missionaries, ministries, landscaping, repairs, you name it. The church doesn't owe a bill. Missionaries have been paid and have had their, their love offerings increased. We've added 12, it turns out, since March. How does that work? What preacher wouldn't be happy about that? To stop taking offerings and see the offerings increase by 50%, I would have told you there's no way that could happen. Folks learning to tithe. Nobody losing their job. As far as I know, not because of COVID. Is that amazing? Do we know of anyone in the church who actually had it? That acknowledged that they did? I don't know of anybody. Shouldn't we be thankful for all this? We're giving more things away this year in our holiday gift giving than ever before. By a long shot, and we've always given lots of things away. A man came by the church the other day. He said, um, I heard you're doing a game room down in Portsmouth. I see you have apartments here. I'm going to start bringing almost new furniture. He said, nothing will be soiled or dirty. He said, there are condominiums that I restore. Sometimes people just move out and leave all that nice furniture. He said, let's start with a, a large screen TV for the game room in Portsmouth. I said, could you, he said, could you use one? I said, yeah. He goes, I'll bring it by tomorrow. We're doing the work over here where we had some mold and bees nest and all that. He said, I'll bring off uh, six rolls of insulation for you. Okay, that's good. <laughs> A man called me two days ago. He's known as Wild Bill. He started talking about some people he knew in the town, people he knew that I knew from years ago. He said, I'm a wealthy man, Pastor Baker. He said, and what I do for churches, I do for free. He said, if you need the roof repaired, I see you do. I want you to call me in the spring, and we'll get the roof fixed for nothing. Wow. We're putting these boxes together for children overseas. Today, a lady came by and brought 13 big bags of toys. So God's just like showering us with stuff. What are we as an assembly going to do? 
curse the darkness? Yell at God? Why are you letting this happen? God's going to shake his fist and say, what do you mean? Why am I letting people be generous to the church? These are tests, brethren. God tells Jonah to do something. Go to Nineveh, verse 2, chapter 1. That great city and cry against it, for the wickedness has come up before me. Now, we know why Jonah didn't want to do this. We wouldn't want to either. These were fierce people. He's one man. It's kind of a strange thing God's asking. I want you to go alone to Nineveh, that warlike nation who's constantly plotting against you. And uh, I want you to preach against it. It doesn't say preach just against their sin. I want you to preach against them. For their wickedness has come up before me. No wonder Jonah said, I don't, I don't want to take this assignment. The more I think about it, the more I think I'm done as a prophet. I'm, I'm done. I quit. But God does not let us off the hook that easy. Somewhere, somehow, I don't know when and where or how. It's not recorded for us. But he made a vow. He made a vow. And we know this because later in the belly of the fish, in his repentance, he said, I will pay what I have vowed. And when he said that, God released him from the fish. So why did God chase this man down, not let him quit? because he made a, a vow. By the way, the people in this church that stood before a preacher and said, I do, made a vow. You want to find yourself swallowed up by your circumstances? Then break your vow. Knowingly and willingly break it and see what happens. So God chases him down, puts him in the belly of a fish. He finds out what hell is like because for three days and three nights, he's in a place where it's 99 degrees and 100% humidity 24-7. He hears horrible noises 24-7 coming from the whale himself. You can go online and play whale noises, humpback whale noises. Some of them are not so frightening. Most of them are very eerie. You can go online and do that. You can listen. He had things crawling all over him in the stomach of that whale as the whale swallowed everything else. Eels and jellyfish and yuck, seaweed. And in the total darkness, he had no clue what was passing through his hair and around his nostrils and all over his body. And as the whale dove up and down and spun around, he went topsy-turvy, never had a moment's peace because hell is like a bottomless pit. And after three days of having just a taste of hell, just a taste of what hell is like, just a taste, he begged to get out. He told God he'd keep his vow. God let him out. And you come to chapter 3, and the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. So did God let him off the hook? I see you don't want to go, you don't have to go. God did not do that. God did not do that. There are many reasons why we're going through this again. But I'm going to tell you one of them is because we didn't do so well the first time around. One of them. 
And I'm sorry, it does not matter what the government did or what the scientists did or what Dr. Fauci did or what anybody did. God says, do all things without murmuring and disputing. So if we complained and argued, we sinned. We might say, well, they sinned too. They did bad things. They tried to take advantage of us. Yes, I don't doubt that at all. But we sinned too. And judgment begins where? With us. Not with them. With us. Not with them. With us. So we got somewhat of a reprieve. Restrictions loosened. We got used to the freedoms. We hardly had anything that inhibited our ministries other than the school thing and getting into the prisons and the nursing homes. But about other than that, we did everything we wanted to do. And now here they come again. Just like God gave Jonah a second chance, He's going to give us a second chance. Now, when God gave Jonah the second chance, Jonah did not run away from God. He obeyed God. He preached to the Ninevites, and they got saved. But now listen, was his heart right? But did he obey? Yes. So he didn't end up in the belly of a fish the second time. That's good. He didn't disobey. He obeyed. But because he, he obeyed reluctantly, did he get blessed because of the good thing that he did? Here's what we see at the end of the book. A man whose preaching brought a great national revival, sitting there wishing he were dead and that maybe God would still kill them after all. That's what we see. Obedient. He did what he was told. Heart not right. Forfeited blessings. So this time around, Let's be cheerful, obedient people. Let's do that. Let's not murmur and complain and say, well, you know, we gotta, we got to comply. Pastor Baker said so. No. Whatever, whatever you feel you should do, do it cheerfully. I'm not here to tell anybody how to respond to this. Just don't respond with murmuring and disputing. And if you choose to obey in any way, do it cheerfully. Because there's another person we can look at. And here's a man who got thrown into prison for doing the right thing. He didn't get put in the belly of a fish for doing the wrong thing. He got thrown into prison harshly, mistreated, for doing the right thing. And what did he do at midnight? He sang and he prayed. And as a result of it, a man got saved. And so the next time he got thrown into jail, he remembered that and wrote the, the epistle to the Philippians, an epistle of joy. how he was willing to do this because it put the gospel out further. What a God-blessed man if there ever was one. Do you believe that? Why? Obeyed cheerfully. No grumbling, no complaining, no harsh statements toward the jailer, no hatred of the Roman government, no wish in evil, no caricatures in the newspaper. Can you imagine Paul doing that sitting down? Let me draw a picture of that jailer with a big ugly nose and looking like a dinosaur. Let me plaster that on the prison walls. 
Can you imagine him doing that? I can't picture him doing that. Not after he prayed that the man would get saved. And the man got saved. Don't say, Pastor, you're talking up there like you didn't do anything wrong. No, I have my sins in all this too. But I want you to know I have learned a lot. And I've changed a lot through it. And I, and I do believe we're facing a second round as a second chance. Restrictions may not ever be as severe as they were before. They may not. But they're coming at a horrible time, aren't they? That's the bad thing about it this time. If we want to complain, there's certainly a lot to complain about. Okay. They're not as severe. But at Christmas time, at Thanksgiving, no guests. We already have a guest coming. He's still coming. I'm not, not taking our invitation back. Why should someone who has no family be told you have to sit and eat with your family only? How does that work? Yeah. You're welcome to come to our home and eat. We're just down the street. You just keep your hands off my plate. And I like the drumstick. But uh, there's plenty to complain about. But God doesn't want us doing any of it. And I think, I honestly think, that's what this is all about. They meant it for evil, no, que no question. God means it for good. I want my people to have a second chance. And you know what will happen to all of us if we come through this, and this time we don't sin through it? At the end of it, we will feel so much better about ourselves. We will say, wow, victory! Victory. We actually did not succumb to Satan's devices. We actually stood strong when we were so tempted to just cut loose again with the murmuring and disputing. We'll all feel so much better about ourselves. And our offerings will increase 2,000%. And Nancy and I will have gold bathroom fixtures. <laughs> and they make you sick, all that stuff. And a lot of what we're facing as a nation, the state of our churches, is because of those jokers back in the 80s. There are hardly any good, good gospel programs on television now. But some of those men had national ministries that did a lot of good. Now that there's nothing out there because of that extravagance and that, that wickedness. So tonight, different kind of lesson, but uh, just some thoughts about where we are and what's going on. And I could just sense when I walked in, there was a little heavy-heartedness because of those words, restriction. But let's not, let's not give in. Let's not. Let's do what we need to do. Let's care. And uh, again, how you deal with it is up to you. But don't sin. That's the main thing. That's the main thing. Let's bow our heads to pray. Have some of our men lead us. Uh, asking God for grace and mercy, uh, spiritual strength, fortitude, that we would lead the way and uh, take these things in proper stride. Sometimes you just have to say, it's, it's time I showed that I was a believer. Pray for revival, church planters. Brother Bob, as he has other preaching engagements this month, hopefully a few more to come in. Pray for these couples that are struggling in their marriages. If God does not intervene or humility somehow emerge to the forefront, we're talking about two broken marriages. That's not good. Not good. 
Father, help us as we pray. Help us pray trusting you, opening our mouth wide and letting you fill it with a big prayer. Help us to not pray feeble prayers, Lord, but prayers that lean upon you and demonstrate to you that we trust you. Your confidence is in you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that you would superintend over our prayers tonight, that the prayers that we lift up to you would be what you would have us to pray. Father, I pray that you would watch out over this assembly during this next uh, phase of the pandemic. Father, I pray that you would watch out over these people, uh, protect us from the COVID, but also help us to learn uh, the lessons and pass the tests so that we might get through this and come out on the other side victorious. Uh, Using the power that you have designed, uh, you said that whatever temptation we face is common to man and that you with the temptation, also make a way of escape that we might be able to bear it. So, Father, help us to look for the way of escape and to use it. In yeah. Jesus' name I pray. Holy Father, you know we've come to really love our brethren in Portsmouth. Father, we pray that uh, during these times of uncertainty, that the folks in that area would look for truth and a solid rock. And Lord, we pray that they would come to see that at the Heritage Baptist Church, Father. Pray that you would grow that church, Father, and may it become a staple lighthouse in that community. In Christ's name, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you are always good. Lord, even if you had only given us salvation, you would have given us far more than we deserve. Lord, you've given us all so much. Thank you for your daily mercy and your grace. Pray that we um, come to you and ask for Um, a clear vision if we have any wicked ways in our lives that we get them exposed and so we can work on them through your strength and that we don't forget that you're on the throne that you're still in control um, regardless of who's in power at the national and federal level that we pray for our leaders and at the local level here in the church that the uh, our brothers and sisters that are going through difficult times in their marriage that they um, confess their sins to each other and that they reconcile and then they come to you in prayer for strength to make it through this difficult time in their marriage Mm -hmm. and I pray that you're Uh, protective hand is over this church during this pandemic that you continue to bless us with health and wealth and um, protection and blessings as we get ready to celebrate the birth of your son our savior Um, thank you Lord for everything thank you for your son dying on the cross for our sins and taking the sins of the world on his body, shedding his blood for us, cleansing us of our iniquity, and we get to lay our um, transgressions at the foot of the cross and know that they're forgiven. Um, Thank you, Lord, for everything. Pray this in Jesus' name.
Father, we thank you for all the opportunities that you've given us to minister. And Father, we pray that you would be with us as we attempt to go to Providence. And Father, that you would give us a building there that we can have control over. And Father, that we would be directed to the people who need us there. Father, that you would give us wisdom in how to minister to them. Father, that you would build a church there. Father God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your word which you have given to us. Yes, Lord. To guide and to direct us. Thank you for the word for tonight. And Father, I pray that we may take heed. Help us not to be like Jonah. Help us to be like David, to seek you in order that you may show us any sin or any shortcomings in our Christian walk. Father, we ask that your spirit may open our hearts to your truth. And that we may be willing to be obedient. Father, as we have faced the coronavirus and the new restrictions that are coming, help us, Lord, to be Christians yes. in our speech mm. and in our doings. Help us, Lord, to care about others. Help us to take the precautions that are necessary. And above all, Lord, we pray that you may be glorified. Help your church to be a light yes. to a lost world. Mm. Help us, Lord, to share Jesus Christ, the good news, with those who do not know him. Help us to be humble in everything that we do, because you're the one who ought to receive all the glory and all the honor. Mm. Help us, Lord, even as our Lord prayed for us, in John 17, or that we may be sanctified by your word, and that we may allow your word to have its way in our lives. Lord, every shortcomings that we do face, we thank you that you promised us 
and that you are always with us. Help us, Lord, to look to you, even in the small things. For we do ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For uh, bringing us uh, to church tonight, Lord, we thank you for uh, thank you for the fellowship, Lord, the singing, and uh, we pray that you would answer all the prayers that uh, we ask of you tonight, Lord. Uh, prepare us for uh, prepare us and bless uh, this uh, coming uh, Sunday uh, morning and evening service, yes. Lord, and uh, dismiss us with your blessings, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen.